Okay. Um, today is Monday, February 22nd. This is class eight of CAD 212, Architectural Applications in CAD. Uh, what we're going to be going over today is the following. Um, let's see what I got. Okay. Um, we're going to be going over uh, in Revit. We're going to be talking about roofs, like an extension of the lecture from last two weeks ago. Uh, we're going to talk about how to add soffit, fascia, and gutters to your house. Um, we're also going to be talking about how to create paints, how to create painting the walls, how to do that, and we'll talk about ceilings today. Some important dates that are coming up. Uh, March 8th, your midterm project is due, and March 10th is the midterm exam. Um, on March 8th, the midterm project will be due um, no later than noon that day, uh, so you can continue working on it, um, or you can turn it in early, however, in, then if you turn it in early, I would suggest just showing up for the beginning of class where we will be reviewing for the midterm exam, uh, and then you can just drop, so if you get everything done early, um, you know, you can just show up or you know, just watch the recording later for the review of the midterm exam, but um, it is important to watch that just so you know what's going on in the um, exam. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, just get started today. First thing I did want to address though is um, some of you, a couple of you are still working in an old version of Revit. Uh, everybody must be working in Revit 2020. I can't open anything as an old Revit file. Uh, so you need to get the Revit 2020 from Autodesk. If you're having trouble with that, let me know. But everybody must be working in Revit 2020. So the two people that are still uh, working in the older version, I've made notes on your Canvas um, submissions. So please do that and then, you know, uh, resubmit those so I can review your progress, but I can't see anything. So it is really important that everybody be working in 24. <clears throat> All right, let's jump into Revit stuff for today. I reviewed some of your recent um, submissions. Not everybody had their roof completed yet, so I'll go over another quick um, explanation of uh, our um, lecture from last week on how to create an entire roof. So we'll do an entire roof today from start to finish, including with today's lecture of soffit, fascia, and gutters, just to make sure everybody's cool with that. So let me jump into Revit and we can get started. And those of you who did turn stuff in, in Canvas, I did make um, notes on your uh, drawings. Most of everything looked, looked pretty good. Um, yeah, just make sure you continue working on that and get the new stuff submitted um, by the end of this week. Okay, so we know that in order to create a roof, we have to have walls in place. I'm just gonna throw up a few walls right here. Do something just a little different. Now, some of you may have more complex roofs than this, but we're all just gonna start out with this basic roof model. Once you turn in your work and I see it, and it looks like your roof is wonky or looks off or something, I'll let you know and um, we'll get together and, and get that fixed and stuff. We'll go on to more complicated roofs in the second half of class. Also, um, in your Canvas notes, I may have said that um, I wanted to talk to you, some of you one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, just to address some issues I saw in your drawing or, or something like that. So please uh, review those notes and reach out to me when you are available to meet and talk about it. Um, I didn't see anything, you know, tremendously wrong, but some things I just wanted to kind of catch early enough and they were a little bit more complicated than um, just something to put in your notes, but all right. Um, so here I've got just kind of a quick little sketch of um, a building. 
So remember to start the roof, we're gonna to go to architecture tab, build panel, roof tool. Yes, we are going to put this on level two. So I'm gonna just put yes. Here, I'm going to change that overhang to two feet. And I'm gonna put a gable just on this front piece right here. So I'm gonna start by picking the walls. And notice that overhang is going to show up where that location line is. Now, in order to put a gable on this front part, I want to turn off defined slope. And when I click on that wall, notice this one does not have a slope symbol in it. So I know this one is angled, this one is angled, this one does not have a slope symbol. So I know the gable is going to be right there. So after that, I'm going to hit the green check mark. Uh, remember, it always asks you this question, and I always want to default to don't attach because if I have interior walls there. Oops. It could mess it up. No, oh, come on. There we go. Sorry, y'all. What did I do? All right. All right, let's try this again. Don't attach three D. All right, so we've got something that looks like that. I wonder if I made two roofs by mistake. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you'll um, make a mistake and you'll like draw one roof and then you'll draw another roof and two will be in place. So let's see if I did that. Oops. I did, see? Um, sometimes when I'm going through people's drawings, I'll notice that, oh, look, uh, something is weird going on and there's two roofs. So notice how on the front of this one, when I did that, I drew two roofs. I've got this one right here and this one right here. Uh, once again, don't have to go back and um, redo all of it. All I have to do is highlight this one. This one is active. The entire roof is active when I do that. And I'm just gonna hit delete. So I got rid of that roof. And now we just have our regular roof left. <clears throat> All this should look familiar. Now I want to connect these exterior walls to this roof itself. So I'm going to click on one wall. I'm going to hold down my control key on my keyboard and I'm going to click the other walls. I'm going to come up here to attach top to base. And then I'm going to click on my roof. So now I've got something that looks like this. Why won't this go away? All right, so all this should be familiar from what we've already done in class. And now we'll start the new stuff as far as adding soffit fascia and gutters. Now the first things I'm gonna add are the, gutter, uh, the fascia and the gutters, and then I'll do the soffit because soffit gets a little confusing sometimes. Gutters and fascia are really easy. So if we remember that our diagram that we looked at last time when we we're doing the fascia, that's just that piece of wood that's gonna run across what would be the rafters right here. So it's gonna go on this external part of the house. So all you have to do is remember that to click on the right part of the house in order for that to show up. So I'm always gonna pick on this top exterior roof line. Let me zoom in a little closer for you. And then we'll click on there. Notice how that um, fascia came into place. We're also gonna do that on the angled part of the roof. And notice how that automatically connect there, which is nice. Now notice there's a big gap in here where the fascia is to the bottom of the roof line. And that just preloaded fascia that we have in there. If we wanna take a look at this, we go into edit type. 
Uh, we just have a one by 12 available. Here you can change the material if you want. If you wanted that to go from gray to a different material, you can change that fascia there as well. Um, you'll start playing with those a little bit more as we go along. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the roof and I'm gonna change that from a basic uh, generic 12 inch to a nine. And that just, this is why I like to use the nine inch roof instead. It just works a lot better, looks nicer and cleaner. Um, but when you're given the information on the exam, I'll tell you which exact roof type to use um, when you do that. So now we've got to go back and continue putting our fascia on. You notice from this angle right here, we have that fascia there, but we don't have it here. So let's just go ahead and continue working on that. So back to the roof tool. Pick on fascia tool. And remember top exterior roof line. If you um, pick the wrong line, it'll look like this. <clears throat> now, you know that is incorrect. <laughs> if you see that, um, a lot of times people just quickly pick along, you know, or accidentally pick the wrong roof line. If you see something like this, you know you did it incorrectly. So I'll just undo that. And I'll continue picking the correct roof line. and then on these sloped ones as well. So now we have all our fascia on. Fascia is very easy. It just gives that finished look to the house. Now, we'll go, well, it doesn't just give that, it's, it's also a structural, well, not actual structural piece, but you actually want to, to use that. I mean, it depends on your design of the house as well. Sometimes, especially in your older houses, you won't have a fascia on, so you will see that. Um, the rafters that come through on here, but all in your, usually all of your new construction, you're going to have a fascia, soft fascia and gutters. Uh, it just depends on how your, the style of your house is when you're putting this together. Um, so the next thing we want to do is add the gutters. So there'll be roof tool and then gutters tool. Gutters are gonna be added the exact same way that uh, the fascia is. We're gonna be picking on the exterior facial, facial line, top exterior facial line. Gutters do not go on the sloped part of the roof because remember the gutters are there to just catch the rainwater. Rainwater is not going to be flowing off the house on a gable part right here. Um, so that is a correct gutter on that top exterior roof line right there. A lot of times people will pick a wrong line, same as before with the fascia, and you'll have a gutter that's right there. That is not correct. Uh, the whole purpose of the gutter is to be on the top part of this roof. So when the rain comes down the roof, it gets caught in the gutter and gets you know, funneled away from the house. Here, the uh, water would still be pouring down the roof and be caught coming down the fascia and it'll end up rotting the fascia. Here it catches it and goes out. Roofs are obviously a lot more complicated than that, but that's just your basics. Um, when we're doing an actual roof drawing, we'll do a lot of roof detail work to um, show how this gets put together. We kind of touched on that a little bit when we reviewed those plans earlier. Um, but basically what you need to know when you're creating your models right now is gutters go up here in this location, not here. Uh, it happens a lot where people accidentally put it here. All right, so let's go ahead and finish our gutters properly. Oh, and then sometimes people pick this inside line and then you wonder where your gutters go and then if you look inside, the gutter is on the inside of the house. So always make sure you pick this ex top exterior facial line to insert your gutters. Go ahead and do that, make sure that's gone. All right, once again, for gutters, architecture tab, biddle panel, roof tool to gutter tool. 
top exterior fascia line. Oh, I deleted my fascia, look at that. That's spastic, you know, it's early in the morning. Just delete that. Now I've got to go back and put all my fascia back on. All right, face is back in place, back to gutters, gutter tool, top exterior face line there. You know, put it on the gable. All right, so here we have all of our gutters complete on the house. Notice when we uh, insert our gutters and our fascia, the angles automatically match together and get connected. I noticed when I was laying out my fascia and my gutters over on this corner, notice how weird this looks here. There's something going on with that roof that is not connecting this correctly. So I'll, I would, should go back and check on this roof and find out why that's not connecting correctly. But anytime you see a connection like that, uh, something's wrong somewhere. So what we should do is delete the fascia gutters and go back and check on and see why that roof is looking wonky. Mm. I'm not gonna do that right now because that it's an anomaly, it doesn't usually happen. Um, but if you do see something like that, let me know and we can go back and I can help you fix that uh, on a one-on-one, -on -one. but usually that doesn't pop up. Any questions about how to add um, fascia and gutter so far, y'all? They're pretty straightforward. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is create a soffit. Let me turn the house over. Let's zoom in on here. So I'm turning the house over so you can see that the soffit will run from the exterior roof line to the exterior wall. So, and that's only, it'll be like a picture frame that really runs around this area of the house. And that is another piece of um, lumber that's gonna, or lumber or could be vinyl not nowadays that uh, is used to cover up that opening right there uh, where the rafters are. Once again, if you have an older house, sometimes those rafters are exposed. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and create that next. Um, one thing to know, since I have a gable in this section of the house, the gable's not, um, when we do this soffit, it's not going to run across this area. It's gonna stop um, right here to leave this part open. And that's all in the way we create that geometry, that shape for the soffit in order to have that run the way we want it to. Um, let's go ahead and jump into that and make it a little, make a little bit more sense when we do it. So uh, once again, our tab, build panel, roof tool down to soffit tool. And it's gonna ask you what level you wanna create your soffit on. Yes, for this one, we can um, create that on level two. So we'll put yes. Uh, if we do needed to change that to say like a third level, if we added like a, um, a third, another story on this house, we can move that based on the location of the soffit um, in our properties. <clears throat> now, if we look at our properties tool in our type selector under here, it says it's the generic that pops up here, the one that default um, that Revit already has loaded into it is a generic four inch soffit. Now, very rarely will you ever see a soffit that's four inches thick. Usually that is just the thickness of a sheet of plywood, which is one and a half inches. Let's go ahead and leave it the four and a half, excuse me, for now, just because it's a little bit easier to see when we're playing. Gosh, I got the hiccups today. So it's way too early for me. Um, we'll go ahead and leave it at the four and a half for now, but do know that structurally, 
uh, you're not going to typically see in a four half inch, uh, four inch soffit, especially on a uh, residential house. So we'll just use the default for now. <clears throat> So we'll use that. So basically what we want to do, I don't know why this won't go away. Thank you. All right, so notice um, in order to create the soffit, we do have the boundary line that's defaulted and also pick walls. So what I want to do, is I don't actually want to pick the walls. I want to go ahead and draw it myself. So I'm going to use pick lines. So when we pick the lines on here, since I have my soffit and gutters, I mean, my fascia and gutters already on here, it gets really confusing about which line I wanna pick. So, you know, it, you may pick the wrong line and then your, your soffit will look weird and it, it'll get a little bit crazy. So before you do that, the first thing you wanna do is probably do the soffit first, but I just wanted to show you how to do the fascia and gutters. Um, so in order to make this a little bit easier for me to draw, I'm just going to go ahead and highlight my gutters and I'm going to hide them for now. I'm going to do a temporary hide. And I'm going to do the same thing with my fascia and I'm going to temporarily hide that. Because they just kind of get in the way of my drawing right now. So I hid those two elements and now it's a lot easier for me to draw my, uh, my soffit. So now I'm going to go back to my soffit tool. Yes, I want it on level two. And then I'm going to use this pick line tool. And I'm just going to pick the exterior line of the house. The soffit's weird. It's going to come in as one giant sheet. Let's just show you how it works. If I just finished it like that and completed it and came up like that, I've got something really wonky and weird that looks like this. So it'll go through the entire house. So I need to go back and edit the boundary of it. So it just runs from my roof line to my um, external wall line. So right now I need to add another boundary that goes around the boundary of that, the roof itself. Actually, I've got the roof itself. I need to add the pick walls for the external walls. So with the house upside down, I'm going to hit edit boundary. Notice here's the boundary of where it was before. I'm going to pick boundary lines again, and I'm going to use pick lines again. And this time I'm going to pick the external wall lines. I'll just do it like this, and then I'll go back and fix it. Just see what happens when we do that. Now we're going to hit the green check mark. And now we have something that runs around the edges of the house. But it's a little high. It's not supposed to be that high. It looks really weird right there when we click on it and we go to properties. Notice it's the it's still the soffit that we selected, but it's kind of like hanging out up here and it needs to be. Um, down here underneath the, uh, the rafters. So I need to do a height offset. Set to level two, which is where it is. It's on 10 foot. So I need to drop it down to about right here. So I'm, I don't have an exact, um, I don't have that exact measurement. So I'm just gonna try a negative one foot and it has to be negative because it, we want it to move down. Let's see where it went. Ooh, there it is. I want it to come kind of even with here. So make that uh, negative one foot four inches. Yep, let's try oops, negative 18 inches. Perfect. So on this one, negative 18 inches worked out really well. Um, sometimes you may have to like, it may be off a little bit. It just so happens negative 18 inches worked out well on that. And we have our <coughs> soffit running around the uh, perimeter of the house. So I'm just gonna change the color of this just so it's a little bit easier to see while we play with it. So I'm gonna hit edit type. 
I'm going to come into edit. Uh, I'm going to change the category of that. Just use this bright yellow. I use that a lot just because it's easy to see. Um, if I was changing this permanently, I would have wanted to duplicate and rename this, but I'm just kind of using this to kind of show you where it is. Remember, anytime you create a new material, you want to duplicate and rename it. Just a little bit easier to see now. Now, the weird part about this, since I have a gable here, is I've got this piece of soffit that's running across the front of the house, which is like super weird. Um, since it's a gable house, it's going to have the um, soffit end on this part, and this part needs to go away. So basically, what I need to do is just edit that shape. So I'm going to highlight the soffit. Go to edit boundary and I'm going to edit the shape of that now. So all I have to do is adjust this magenta a location line. So I'm going to have one piece here. Actually, so like that. Notice how I just created those shapes that look like this. All the rest of it's still in place, but I eliminated that just by editing the shape of it. Now when I hit my green check mark, I've got something that runs like that for the gable. Now there's no presets, there's no pre-made objects that we have in Revit that help us like finish off this edge. Um, and make this not an opening, what I would do is just kind of create a little tiny wall in there or something like that uh, to fix that. When I put my soffit and fascia and gutters all together, I have something that looks like this. Uh, in order to create an end cap for this gutter, I actually have to, um, you know, in order to have that on there, I have to create it itself. Um, and we, that's something we could talk about in advanced class. It's not, it's just something small that, you know, I'm trying to get you the big giant concepts here as opposed to this. This is something easy to figure out later on. Uh, and that's basically how we do our soffit fascia and gutters. What most people have trouble on is the uh, soffit. Uh, and once again, that's just practice. And um, once again, the basics are to remember is to pick the exterior wall line and the exterior roof line. Any questions about that before we go on, y'all? What I would suggest is getting start working on your roofs. Those of you who haven't don't have your roofs up yet, get that done and then um, start playing with these objects. Uh, spend some time doing soffit because uh, that is probably, you know, the one that gives people the most difficulty. Obviously, fascia and gutters are very easy. All right, what's next? Mm, painting, painting's always fun. All right, so as you notice, the more stuff we get involved with this model, the more things we have to hide and kind of play with. So uh, I wanna paint the inside of the house, those interior walls. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide my roof. I'm gonna do temporary hide isolate. Have this nice open space to look at. I'm going to jump back to level one. We'll be going back and forth a lot. I'm going to uh, add another couple of walls just to add some interior spaces. Now your house should look something like this with some lovely um, gray walls. Obviously your house isn't decorated all in this um, gypsum board look. 
So we want to add some paint to each one of these walls. Um, there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. For this one, we're just going to use a basic paint and we'll go ahead and do it in 3D for now. So the first thing you want to do is remember to create your material. For our materials, um, go away. Uh, we want to go to Manage tab and we're going to our Materials tool. This is kind of a repeat of the previous lectures, how we created different materials. But you have to have your materials preloaded into the house before you can paint them on your walls. So let's make one or two paints right now just to refresh. So Materials tab, and we're going to come down here to the little orb and create a new material. I'm going to rename that. Just call it paint. This bedroom and my initials. So I'm going to create this bedroom paint. After I rename it, I'm going to come down to my asset browser, open that up. And you can use whatever you want to paint your walls. Technically, the term is painting, but if you wanted to apply um, like terracotta on there or use any of these materials. If you want to make glass walls or these metal walls, uh, you know, obviously you probably want to keep it close to what your house looks like, but you can use whatever you want. Now, if you really wanted to say, uh, make stone walls, you can use this. Uh, we could create it with a stone wall or we could, you know, apply the pattern on it. This time we're just going to use it to, to kind of create a paint. Now, uh, if you notice, there's different shapes on here. These are kind of like glass partitions. This is a cloth material. Uh, say if we were going to use um, a paint, these, the way this wall is broken down, this is supposed to resemble like what a paint would look like. So I'm just going to pick this paint for, the, for, the, um, for this example. Remember, we can hit the double arrows or we can just double click on here. That'll assign it to our material. I always want to go to graphics and I also always want to use use render appearance. So this is the blue that it'll be come up as. So I've created that material, that paint is in there for me to use right now. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go to my modify tab. And per the information here, we want to use the split element tool and then the paint tool. Split element is going to actually as it says, split these walls. Because if I right now, if I did my paint tool and if I painted this wall, it's going to paint this entire wall, not just this room blue. So let me just show you how that works. So uh, paint tool is located over here in the geometry uh, panel. It's the paint tool. You click on that. Then this um, materials browser will show up. Here's that paint that I just created. If I click on that and I click on this wall here, Notice it's going to paint the entire wall blue. And I don't want the entire wall blue. I just want this section of wall blue. So I can either undo this or I can also unpaint something. If I wanted to just use um, unpaint, I can come up here, do the little drop down, and it says remove paint. Click on here and it'll remove paint. So now what do I do to, in order just to paint this section of wall? Well, let's go to a top-down view. And still in our Modify tab, we're going to go to our Modify panel. And this little tool right here is Split Element. So if we click on that, their cursor turns into like a little X-Acto knife or something. And notice when I come over here with the X-Acto knife, it's got that let me change this. You can see it a little bit better here. You can see how that it's going to split it right where I've got that. I can do it with an exact measurement with my temporary dimensions. But since I want to actually, I know this is going to be just this room over here, I want to split it in between this wall. And I'll do the same thing in between this wall. And I want, I'm picking this one because if I paint this wall one color, it's going to paint the entire wall one color. So I'm just going to pick this one. So now I've got one section of wall here. I've got a section of wall here. And when I paint stuff, it'll only show up on this wall and this wall. And I can paint these walls a separate color as well. 
So let's jump back to 3D and color. Just turn my color back on. All right, so this was wall as a section, this wall as a section. Now when I go back to modify tab, let's turn on my paint tool. Let's pick out my blue. Just gonna apply that to that wall and that wall. Notice it did not show up on this one. It did not paint this wall as well because I split this one as well. Let me go ahead and flip this around. Now paint that one and that one. And this is kind of a fun way we can add some color to our project. If I wanted to finish um, this paint and I finished painting, I could just click on done. If I wanted to change the, my color and paint these walls over here something else, I can go ahead and just pick another um, material. Here I've put like uh, applying uh, this oak to the wall. Let's jump into realistic for a second. So here we have like a wood wall and then our painted wall. Let me see if I decided I didn't like this. Um, notice here, I didn't split the wall at this point. So this entire wall is um, wood. If I wanted to go ahead and split that, I could just delete this or I could use remove paint. Well, if I hit with that, delete it without doing remove paint, I did the entire wall. So I do need to go back and do remove paint, remove paint from here. So if I only wanted part of that wall done, since this wall runs to here as well and here, I'm gonna have to go back to my split element. And I wanna split it in the middle of the wall. If I did it right here, and I went back to paint, I would have like a tiny sliver of that wall available. So let's paint again, paint. And I come back here. Well, that's why we split in the middle of the um, perpendicular wall. So we don't have any kind of stray paint kind of overhanging here. Um, that's why it's always best to do it in the middle of that perpendicular wall. So let's undo that. Go back one more time, split. We'll split in the middle of the perpendicular wall. I'm gonna go back to my paint tool. Use that oak flooring and just apply that to that section of wall. And if I wanted to put another something over here on this wall, I can use an element that's already available. Do a carpet wall. And then when I'm finished, I hit done. A lot of times when people are trying to do their materials, they'll just pick the material, then hit done, and then they'll try and apply it and wonder why it's not working. Well, you have to keep the materials um, tool open, and once you're finished, click done. And then, um, then it'll end. So you do notice that there's still a line visible here in this intersected wall. When we actually go in and render it, it will go away. So don't worry about this um, being visible right now. It's just visible so we can use it as a tool. Um, but when we actually do a rendering, it'll, it'll disappear. So that's not a concern. <clears throat> All right, any questions about paint? Pretty much on paint, it's just as is, create your materials first, split elements, and then use your paint tool. But in order to use any kind of like interesting paint and really kind of customize this, you definitely want to create your materials before you go into paint. Okay, no questions on that. We'll go ahead and move on. Uh, next, next we're going to talk about ceilings. There's somebody at my door, so I'm going to pause this for a second.
Zoom recording. All right. So we're back to class after that brief interlude. Uh, and we're jumping back into ceilings. Um, there's two ways to create ceilings. We can do automatic ceiling, sketch ceiling, and we always want to create a zip, uh, a gypsum ceiling when we're doing ours. Uh, the default is for acoustical ceiling tile. Um, and unless we're doing something commercial, such as Delgado, um, you don't usually see acoustical ceiling tile unless it's a commercial building. Um, so that's why I always want to have y'all default to create a gypsum ceiling. So let's jump into that now. All right, top down view, top down view. So for ceilings, what we want to do is we want to jump back over to the project browser. And here we've got our ceiling plans, ceiling plan level one, ceiling plan level two. To create this, we're going to do our ceiling in level one. So we'll click on that. And we have this view that looks like this. Uh, we're going to jump to our architecture tab, our build panel, and our ceiling tool. When we click on the ceiling tool, this is where it's going to default to automatic ceiling, which is nice because as soon as we go over a room, notice we get that red borderline that's showing us where that built that ceiling is going to look. Uh, we're looking at it like from the um, from the bottom. If you're laying on the floor and you're looking up, that's why it looks like the roof above it when you can see it, and then it'll jump into something like that. Obviously, that is the symbol for acoustical ceiling tile. Notice over here it says uh, exactly that it's a two foot by four foot acoustical ceiling tile. So that's how we add it in there, but you're not going to want to have that look in your house. It's very uh, unlikely that you have that. We want that to be a gypsum. So at this point, we're going to go into edit type. We're going to duplicate. And we're going to create ceiling. Yep. Initials. And we're going to go into edit. Now in here, you can see this is a complex ceiling because it's a acoustical ceiling tiles. Ours doesn't have to be this complicated. Uh, we just want to have a, a simple one. So we can actually delete this material. We'll stick with our one piece of material here, but we'll change that to finish layer one. Uh, let's just make that one inch thick. This would typically be a piece of um, gypsum wallboard, which would be a thickness of half an inch, but let's just make it one inch for now. And then for the material, we want to change that to gypsum wallboard, use render appearance, click OK. I'm going to click OK and get out of that. Out of that. Notice it didn't change this material here. It still left this as acoustical ceiling tile. So let's delete that. Why do you not want to work with me today? And we'll jump back into our ceiling. Notice how it is just a chipboard ceiling now. It went from the um, acoustical ceiling tile pattern to now just um, plain pattern, which would be our chipboard. And once you click on each of those, you see parts of that roof disappear. So to create a ceiling, it's very straightforward. Um, it's very easy to do, just kind of clicking them in place as far as your basic ceiling. Um, let me go ahead and delete those. I thought I would do it a couple of different ways to show you. A lot of times people will forget to go into your ceiling plan level one. They'll go to floor plan level one. You'll have something that looks like this. Now, if we go into our ceiling, I still have that, that material I created. I still have that proper jib board ceiling I created. But I'll come in here and it's still going to give us that option to just pick the spaces and that's that's automatic ceiling is going to come into place. But when I click on there, it's going to give me this warning that says none of the created elements are visible in this floor plan. Um, so that means it's been created, but you just can't see it in this view. 
nothing changed when we created that. Uh, it just can't see it. And people just keep clicking and they're like, why isn't my feeling showing up? And just like, we'll keep doing this and this. And then I'll be like, oh, uh, something's up. Um, and they don't understand what's, what would happen. So then we go to 3D and we go to something like this and we're like, oh, I, my ceiling is there. So you think your ceiling's there, but now when you click on the ceiling and we hit delete, there are multiple ceilings in place. <laughs> so what happens if you only have one ceiling uh, in place is when I click on it and make it active, I can see through it. If I click on this and make it active, well, not that, the ceiling and make it active, I can't see through it. So I know there are multiple ceilings. So you can add multiple ceilings and multiple ceilings. Um, if you're not sure, always come back to 3D, click on the ceiling. If you can see through it, you only have one in place. If you can't see through it, then you have multiple ceilings. So let's just delete those. All right, so now I only have that one. If I did go to delete it, oh, now I can see inside the building, the whole ceiling's gone. I can undo that, put that ceiling back, click on it, see through it. Okay, that's all right. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, I can't see through that. I must have multiple ceilings. Hit delete, delete, delete again. Okay, now I only have, now I can see through it. I only have one ceiling left. So you can't add a bunch of multiple ceilings at times, but you always just want to have one ceiling. Um, it is something that I check. So make sure that when you add your ceilings, the easiest thing to do is go to ceiling plan and add it there. If I click on this one, um, I can see a difference there because I'm looking, I'm like laying on the floor, looking up at the roof and I can see that roof line. So if I hit delete here, it does make a difference in the way I see it. So that's kind of a basic, um, way to do a ceiling is just it's it's nice um, and it just kind of like puts it in place for you but sometimes you may want especially if you have a split level house or two level two-story house you may want an opening in that ceiling where you can uh, see the um, yeah there's there's different ways that you could do a split ceiling per your design and you may want to just have half of this ceiling open um, so let's go ahead and do that so that would be like architecture tab uh ceiling tool but this time we're going to do sketch ceiling we're going to draw the shape of the ceiling how we want it to look instead of just doing the automatic ceiling and having it fill up that entire space if that's active and i bring over here with the, my red ceiling lines the whole thing will fill up now i can go ahead and jump into sketch ceiling uh, on here it's going to default to boundary lines and it's going to default to your line tool. So that means I can draw the shape of the ceiling that I want and I'm just going to come back in with that magenta line. And if I even wanted to just kind of do something like this. Whatever shape I draw is going to be become the ceiling. So here's my my three lines over here. This part's going to be sealing when I hit the green check mark. We're still going to be able to see the roof when I hit the green check mark on this side. So green check mark, sealing parts over here. This is open over here. Let's jump to 3D to take a look at that. And I have something that kind of looks like that for the ceiling. Ceiling, ceiling, ceiling. So you can uh, create any kind of shape of ceiling that you want. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Does that make sense, everybody? Yes. Cool. All right. So that's pretty much it for today, for the stuff that we're gonna go over today. Um, what I'd like you to do is continue working on your um, model. Uh, you're not gonna have anything due today. Uh, once again, um, to check on your work progress, that's going to be due on Friday. That mod is already available. Don't turn anything in yet until we go over our lecture on Wednesday. But if we take a look at the timeline that we have left um, for, the, for the half first half of the semester, we've got today's class, we've got Wednesday, and then we've got um, the following week. Uh, once we finish our lecture on Wednesday, most of the things that we're going to be talking about as far as creating your model are going to be done. 
Um, so your model should basically be almost finished by this time. Uh, we're gonna talk about sites and how to create a site and things like that here. The following week, we're gonna talk about how to start putting our sheets together and how to create our sheets. And then we're going to have, uh, you'll have the class time on Monday to work on stuff. If you've got questions and things, we're not gonna be going over anything new on the 8th besides the review for the midterm. Um, but your project will be due at noon on Monday, March 8th. So um, shoot to have all of your model work done by the end of this week. Um, and then the following week for the first and the third, we're gonna be going over how to create sheets and how to gather all this information together and how it makes sense uh, to somebody. Um, so that's it for the, um, that's it for today's class. I'll go ahead and open up the floor to any questions that y'all have, any questions about any stuff that we've gone over since the beginning of class, we can review that now at this time. Um, and let's, um, let's go ahead and do that. Any questions y'all? Yeah, I have a question. Um, so like, how is the midterm exam going to play out? So it's going to be, um, during class time, it's going to be during class time, and what I do for the midterm exam is I give you a, it's, and you'll be doing it live within class, so we'll start at nine, and then I'll give you till 1145, so that's more than enough time to get it done. You'll basically be drawing a uh, tiny building uh, and going over everything that we've done in class. Uh, it'll be live. You can have your book open and your notes open or whatever. You can't do that, but it is a time that's in the, within that time period. If you are, did you turn it in late? That will affect your grade. Uh, we mm. do that we get our work in on time, but I'll give something like, um, I'll give you a floor plan and it would be like, a, you would draw the floor plan, but I would also give you the thickness of the walls, like create an external wall that's made up of half inch of brick, three and a half inches of lumber, half inch of gyp. So you need to create the walls per uh, instructions. And Will uh, you go as far in the instructions to tell us like, cause I remember like some of the stuff it has like, like cores or something. Cord? Yeah, like when you make a wall like, and like you edit it, there's like a, um, there's like this, hold on, let me pull it up. So don't sound too dumb trying to talk about it. Let me, um share the screen yeah when you when you go to edit type uh-huh and then yeah the like the, the, so like yeah you have the core boundaries oh you know core boundaries about? the uh, yeah. edit assembly uh yeah window. i'm gonna give you exactly let me let me pull this so, up you have to find those for us yes i'll have i'll have that written out specifically how i want that um that wall constructed very I'll nice like, create an external wall that is a uh, half inch of brick, um, three and a half inches of structural lumber, and then another half inch of gyp. I'll give you exactly how that wall is to be constructed and you'll sure to have know how to lay this out correctly in this area. Nice. Yeah, and then the same with like the slab and the, and the finished floors and things like that. Like for finished floors, I'll say, you can choose mm -hmm. the material of your finished floors, but the finished floors have to be quarter inch thick. Uh, slab will have to be 17 inches thick and it should be made of uh, cast in place concrete um, cement stuff like that okay so it's every, i have everything spelled out exactly how you're supposed to to do that building um so and it covers pretty much everything we've done since the beginning of the first half of the semester how, how to create a roof uh, what's the slope going to be on the roof what's the overhang going to be on the roof are you going to have a gable in part of that roof stuff like that gotcha thanks yeah no worries yeah we'll go over that again as we get closer but just you know to get on give you a head start um yeah that's pretty much how it's going to be broken down so you'll be creating a brand new um building within the that two hour time period and yes it is possible <laughs> um any other questions y'all All right, if there's no other questions today, we can go ahead and end class today. For those of you that are still working in an older version of Revit, there's two of you, please get that new version of Revit done and get your work updated into that 2020 version of Revit. If you're having issues with that, contact me directly. Remember, you can send me a text as far as um, getting that taken care of. 
And if you do have any questions, you can text me anytime. I'll see if I can um, help you as soon as possible uh, and get that you know taken care of for you. I'll get this um, recording uploaded today and uh, I will see y'all Wednesday. All right, peace out. Thanks, y'all.